Forget about loving others until you can love yourself. I don't think it's possible to love anybody fully unless you love yourself. That kind of sounds weird. You know, I never really thought about it until a couple of years ago. And the more I think about that, the more true it is to me because unless I forgive myself or like I see things in other people and I think we all experience this where somebody is irritating to you or you get pissed off at somebody real easy, it's typically something within yourself and you really can't fully give yourself to somebody else until you love yourself first. Now, we're gonna explore that today and I think it's really fun. It's gonna be a brief presentation, so y'all hang on. Let's get started with this. So how can you love somebody else if you don't love yourself? There are a couple of things in this presentation that I think are pretty important for us just to consider in our daily life, like jealousy. If you have a lot of jealousy, it's tough to love somebody else, really. You know, are you jealous of their talents? Are you jealous that they spend time with other people? Are you jealous? Uh, jealous is bad. How about coveting somebody else's property in, in a negative way? You know, like, it's one thing to say, you know, visualization of something, like I really enjoy these that person's house. I'd like to emulate that and emulate their lifestyle if possible. But there's another thing to say, I can't stand that prick because they have a nice car. It's a big, big difference. And, then, and so are we doing that to people we love and care about or want to love and care about? And are we thinking we can get something for nothing? I think we all have family members and people that have been close to us that want something for nothing. They want to do things and take for nothing. And if we do that, like, you know, oh, my parents, they're wealthy and I'm just a jackass living off them, so should I just continue to take and take and take? Can I fully love my parents if I'm just a thief? You know, I, I, don't, I don't really think you can. Negative judgments without knowing facts or details. Can you really... You know, if you're mad at your brother or you're mad at your whoever, but you don't know all the details, is that love? You know, you just jump, jump right at it. I don't know. I don't think so. How about can you love somebody if you think, damn, I can't ever say anything to that person because they won't ever shut up. You know, they just don't shut up. If you don't shut up and listen to somebody, how, how can you really love them? Because you don't know where they're coming from. You just, you just don't get it. I don't believe we should um, try to possess somebody else. I'm like, you don't belong to me. I don't, Jill does not belong to me. I just happen to share as a partner in, in her life for as long as she wants me to. But I don't own her. And I don't have a whip in my closet. Well, I might, but I don't have a whip to, you know, you know what I, you know what I mean. Um, how about... Uh, can you really love yourself if you're not connecting to the universal energies, like through meditation, however you decide to do it? Because it's a fact. I mean, we all, most of us know that our bodies have its own frequency. There's a lot of science that uh, people are healing themselves with sound from all sorts of diseases and chronic illnesses. We know that our body emits a electromagnetic waves and the earth does too. Uh, if we're not connecting to that, I think it's problematic, and we're going to get into that. I'm really glad Jill doesn't do this to me. I think that's a bad idea. You know, jealousy really destroys a lot, and I don't think you can really love with a lot of jealousy. And if we are jealous, then how do you express it? You know, you just think about that, because most people are jealous. I know a lot of guys that are really, really jealous, and that's it's destructive. It's super destructive. I think we have to ask ourselves when we start to feel jealous or we have jealous tendencies, why? You know, like we should practice talking to ourselves, like a lot. Like I do it all the time. Like if any of y'all that don't come out very often and you see me walking, because I like to walk out here all over the place and I'm just rambling to myself. And if you didn't know me, you'd think, man, that dude is weird. You know, <laughs> like what is he doing? Well, I'm just having a conversation with myself. And I especially do that in the study. And I think that is a healthy thing we should practice. Ask ourselves, hey, why am I doing that? How is that being perceived? Are my expressions of my jealousy causing more harm in my life than good? I think it's a good question to ask ourselves. How many of us know these people? Man, they just got a knife right there. 
And as soon as we turn around, we know they're just going to stab it right in our back. You know, at least that's our perception anyway. Like, they're, oh, that person has a, a talent that I don't have. They have the boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, and I just can't wait to destroy them. Like, there's a lot of that. And we've all experienced it. I think we should drop the knife. <laughs> let's, just drop, let's just drop the knife. I think we're going to be okay if we let it go. It would be wonderful if we could figure out in our minds and in our hearts to say, I'm really happy that that person has a better talent than me. I can learn something from them. You know, that person's a better public speaker. That, be that person is good at doing whatever. How can I learn from them instead of going, I can't wait to tear them down. As soon as he's out of my sight, I'm going to start talking crap. You know, that's, that's a bad practice. That does nobody any good. It creates a really bad environment and bad vibes. And I know that people, everybody in here probably has done or done or seen it. You see a pretty couple or even an ugly couple. They just have pretty love. You know, they're just pretty in love. And you, somebody inevitably will go, oh, y'all go get a room. We don't want to see that. That's nasty. Gross. We don't want to see you showing affection. That's nasty. I mean, it is nasty if it's obscene, you know, I mean, all of a sudden they're over there ripping their clothes off and sticking their tongues in, and like, that's too much, right? But if they're genuine and, you know, I want to touch the person I love, I, I want to put my hand on their shoulder, I, I, want to, I want to kiss them on the cheek or give them a peck, I mean, all those things are wonderful. So if, why, why do we say, hey, y'all go get a room, why don't we do that? Most everybody in here has probably said that or thought it or seen somebody else say it. Why don't we applaud that? And then because something's lacking in our own life, you know, we should open up. Like, are we giving ourselves the opportunity to have romance? Because normally you'd probably say that because you're thinking, what an ass, man. I don't have any love in my life. I don't have that romance. My spouse doesn't do that. My girlfriend doesn't do that. Y'all go get a room. Y'all are sick. Y'all are making me explore my own lack of romance when really it's a perception i mean we we get what we give i'm learning that more and more every day especially over the past several years if you want romance we'll be a little bit more romantic if you want great communication practice communication if you want to be heard practice listening it's really important you're not going to have people that love you if you're not giving them love. It's really important for us to consider these things. You can't be close. I can't be close to Chuck if I call Chuck and Chuck doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard. So if he wants to be close, he has to talk back. We have to share. I think this is wonderful with visualization because it uh, has been, played a massive role in my own life. I can't wait till I can do this. I can't wait until I have XYZ material bullcrap that I now really no longer care about, but I still kind of care about it. Weird thing. But uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about looking at other people's crap and hating them for it. Like, oh, you got a nice place. You're, you're a prick. <laughs> you know, pe people think that. Um, I think that's a bad thing to do. I think if we look at somebody else that's in love and we say, man, how did that ugly dude get that pretty girl? Man, that is so weird. Why is that, why is that girl with that guy or the guy with that girl? That didn't make any sense. I hate them. I mean, that's, that's a bad, I see, you see that all the time. We should catch ourselves if we ever find ourselves thinking those kind of things because being self-aware is important. And what we feed ourselves with our thoughts is important. It's really important. And nobody owes us anything. Yeah, you know, it's hard. Uh, you know, my mom doesn't owe me anything. My dad doesn't owe me. It'd be nice if they gave great love and affection and tender, loving care. I mean, do they owe it to me? I don't know. Probably. But do they owe me money? Because they, one, one of them has it? I don't think so. Does Andrew owe me anything? No. I don't owe any of y'all anything, but I like to help y'all when I can, some of y'all. I think it is interesting to think about that nobody owes us anything and we get what we give. If you want something, you give it, no matter what it is. 
your thoughts, your emotions, uh, money, for instance, even a business partner. That's a great example. If you are not acting, like if, let's say, uh, you, me and you getting a business deal, and you put up all the money, if I am not doing my part, if I'm not giving of myself to make that work, then I'm stealing from you. That's this theft. So you didn't owe me that I owe you. It's a, we don't owe each other unless we get in a contractual agreement, verbally or otherwise. So outside of that, nobody owes us a damn thing. And just a little side note, like if you don't think of that, I say I've seen this a lot lately over the past month, like people think that uh, some wealthy person or some corporation owes um, their employees or their people a better wage or somebody's making too much. I've seen this a lot. Has nothing to do with us. If you don't like them, don't be around them. If you don't like their product, you don't like what they're doing, don't use it. If everybody did that, all of a sudden the jackasses of the world kind of fade away. Instead of just bitching and moaning and creating divides and bull crap, just don't use them. Tell your friends, hey, this particular company does this, and if you're for that, continue to buy it. If you don't, if you don't like that, don't use them. That would probably be a lot healthier way instead of just bashing everybody. I think it's a, just a little side note that I was thinking about. And how many of us have done this? Yep, I know it all. Or we've been around people like this for sure. I know everything. And they just don't shut the hell up. They have some kind of false sense of uh, esteem that they just have to do. And if nobody likes anybody that does not shut up. You just don't. If you don't listen to somebody, if you don't listen to your loved one trying to explain something to you, how do you know? How do you know what their problem is? How do you know how to fix anything if nobody's communicating? Like if Bonnie walks in and Billy was just a prick, and, and, what, ha and what happens if uh, she never tells him and she lets that just build up inside of her and she talks bad about him behind his back? instead of communicating. Like that's a real marital issue that happens in almost every marriage. We'll, we'll let something build up inside of us because we never communicated. And then if we do communicate, uh, all of a sudden the other partner is not receptive. And you know, I mean, it takes, don't be a know-it-all because sometimes in marriages and relationships we'll assume we know what our spouse or our friend's problem is without really listening. And we don't allow them to speak. We just run right over them. I think it's bullshit. Now, if Jill came at me with a bullhorn, <laughs> it would change our relationship. Uh, yeah, I did not. <laughs> she does have a waiter's bell for me. That that's true. I don't think this works. And th when I was looking at this a minute ago, before we started, I thought of about the broader picture of like if you can imagine a big circle. So you have all throughout history, we've had this quasi-capitalist systems and then all of a sudden they they go into a socialistic thing and then communistic thing and then that collapse with some dictator or some crap and then it goes right back into the same thing and then if you take that and go into the the micro level of ourselves we kind of do the same thing but we 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 feel like oh well i want to explore like when me and jill first started dating i didn't think i was like bam this is great but all of a sudden if I wanted to start taking all of her stuff, which I see a lot of people do that. And then all of a sudden, one of us is going to be a dictator. And then it all starts over. We get divorced. We get, you know, all, we, we just live in these loops. And I don't think they're necessary. I think we do that to ourselves. We just do it to ourselves. Man, I have, uh, lately I've had quite a few atheists uh, tell me how crazy it is to con try to connect to the universal energies. I'm thinking, well... It, it's a scientific fact. We all know. We, we admit energy. We know that the earth does. We know that the cosmos does. And we know that we are stardust. It doesn't matter. What you think, we have this notion, a lot of people, that we are separate from the earth. We are separate from the stars. We are separate from these things. Well, you're, you have to eat. Where's your food come from? It comes from earth. 
You have to have sunlight. Where does it come from? It comes from space. Like we are on this thing. We are this thing. We are that energetic field. And we have to close our eyes and connect to it. I go to a group uh, with some guys and uh, they talk about their higher power. And I see this higher power work in those areas and every area, different uh, religious organizations. And you can see when people are genuinely attempting to connect to a higher power, that something miraculous happens. It just happens. Because we are the energy field. And no matter what you believe, whether it's uh, Jesus, uh, Buddha, Krishna, wh whatever, that higher power I don't believe is looking down and going, you got it wrong. I don't think so. I think it's, that's madness. I think it's madness. I don't think Jesus is going, oh, well, <laughs> you said Allah. Sorry. I don't think so. That's crazy to me. It's crazy. I don't think there are any excuses for us not to connect. And if y'all know anything about remote viewing or there's so many other things that it, it's real, these uh, energetic forces and things between us. And I'm just going to wrap this up real quick because I think the universe gave us a big tool and it's called the mirror. A really, really, really big tool. If we could ask ourselves every day, like, am I the spouse that I would want to be? Like, if I could just put myself in Jill's shoes and say, Man, I'm glad I'm married to Kevin. Like, if I can't say that honestly, then I got a problem. I got a big problem. If, if we can't look at ourselves and go, is that the person that I would want to be with? How about your friends? Are you the friend that you want to be? That's a big one. Like, am I the friend? Like, uh, I get a text and calls from y'all, like quite a, almost every one of y'all, almost, a lot. And am I the friend that I would want to have? I think about that sometimes whenever I uh, get a text from somebody and I'm thinking, well, I'll answer them in just a minute. And then I'll catch myself and I'll go, uh-uh, no, I I'm available right now. I, don't need, I didn't need to set that down. I need to reply right now because I want the same thing in return. I... And I think all of y'all, if we really think about it, if we can try to be the friend that we want, we'll have a lot more friends. We'll have a lot more connections. And if you're not talking to yourself, whether you're in good or bad moods, man, you need to ask yourself questions. You know, like uh, you get in a fight with somebody, you're like, man, was I the dick? <laughs> was that me? Uh, but you have to be objective about it. And that's really hard. It's painful. Mirrors can be really, really tough. Same thing with setting goals. You know, like, are, are I taking little baby steps to get what I want? Whether it's spiritually, financially, with friends, with whatever it is. Am I taking the steps necessary to do that? Am I? Are you looking in the mirror going, yeah, maybe. Are you doing meditation every day? Are you setting your intentions? Are you making your life better? Are you doing it? I don't know. It's an individual question. Everybody has their own mirror. I don't see your reflection. I only see mine. That's it. I love you guys. If this resonates with y'all, all of you people out there that watch, and thank y'all for making these numbers grow like crazy. I love y'all. I appreciate it. And uh, we're going to eat some crawfish. And whoever wants to join, we're going to do about a 10-minute meditation right next door. And if you don't, well, then you just miss out. I love y'all. See y'all next time.